Kufila. Thank you very much again, Uncle Vijaya, for being here with us today. So, Uncle Vijaya, you're a very well-known figure in the Buddhist community, um, having provided education and Dharma talks uh, through various channels and various Buddhist associations. So, um, do share with us a little bit about your early contact with Buddhism. Thank you, Kawe, for inviting me for this talk show. I'm very honoured that you have called me. It goes back to the day I was born, actually, because my parents have been Buddhist. My whole family, we are from Sri Lanka and therefore for generations we have known nothing but Buddhism. So I was born into Buddhism. My parents died when I was very very young so I was brought up by my uncle and aunt who are also very very devout Buddhists. So I sort of didn't come into contact with Buddhism. Buddhism was a part of me all along. All right? So in your early years, yeah. what was your initial understanding on Buddhism? Uh, initial understanding of Buddhism was, of course, Buddha image was there. And every morning, as I told you, my, my uncle and aunt were very devout Buddhists. Devout in the sense of that devotion was paramount. So every morning and every evening, they would go to the uh, altar, uh, go to the altar. They would uh, offer flowers of a lights, definitely they would say the gathas, the pujas, morning and night. Okay, so my uh, introduction was that I, I grew naturally into it. And from that time, even till today, we do the same thing. So our, our Buddhism is at home, is very much a devotional Buddhism, De devotional Buddhism. While that was happening, and that, that was being strengthened, and of course, I got married to auntie who also comes from a, that kind of a background. So it's very easy for us to bring up the children in the same way, okay? So these things come in, but at the same time, uh, it wasn't enough for me just to do these devotional things. So I still do it, but I knew there was more to it. Then I started reading. Uh, my uncle and aunt also used to read. So they used to leave things lying around, little booklets in English. And uh, even at the age of 12, 13, I was picking those up. We didn't have much opportunity to go to the temple. We had very little to do it because we were living in a little village in Nilai, in Negrusi Milan. And uh, so coming to the temple in Brickfields was very difficult. So I, only, I remember the first time I, I came to the Brickfields Temple was 1948. I was eight years old and it was Vesak and oh, it was, it was heaven. It was so beautiful. Then the next time was 1952. That's the first time I met Chief Reverend. When I met Chief Reverend, then it began. Then, then the, uh, the academic, the doctrinal aspects started to take centership. Uncle Vijaya, one of the initial and primary steps right, in embracing Buddhism, in, or rather in any religion, is Sadda, or, yeah. in, or uh, faith in Pali. Mm. So faith, if anyone were to you know, Google this um, mm. on the internet, mm. faith would be defined as a strong belief in yeah. the doctrines of yeah. a religion yeah. based on spiritual conviction rather than proof and evidence. Yes. So could you um, perhaps clarify on how faith and devotion in Buddhism, Sadda in Buddhism, is different from what is defined on Google? Yes. Uh, you see, there are a lot of words that we use in, in Pali which are very, very important to understand in their original Pali nuance. Yeah? And sometimes when the early people who translated from Pali into English use simple words like one that comes to mind is uh, faith, another one is dukkha, suffering. These kind of words are just translated as suffering and they give a, a different nuance. Why? Because English, of course, is based on a Christian background, Judeo-Christian background. So their understanding of faith, yeah, when, trans when sraddha is translated into faith, carries different connotations. In Buddhism, Faith is very, very important. 
What are they? The very first one is faith, Shraddha. Faith then comes to energy. Faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration and wisdom. That's, that's the path. So you see, faith takes the first most important step. But that faith is not a blind allegiance or a blind belief. I'm reminded of Mark Twain, the American writer, who defined uh, faith as faith is believing something which you know ain't true. Okay, that, that, I mean, he was uh, saying it tongue in cheek, but you can see what it means. When we Buddhists talk about faith, what we mean is a deep-seated uh, confidence, uh, 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 an acceptance that this path which I am taking can be the right path. I don't know yet, I haven't attained Nirvana. But at this stage, I am prepared from all the evidence that I have gathered around me, the life of the Buddha, the teaching of the Buddha, the teaching on karma and uh, rebirth. And when I put all these together, I say to myself, I, I develop a confidence in the teaching. I am not wavering. Okay? So that if, if that faith is not there, that, that beginning is not there, I can't follow the other steps. Now in Buddhism also, faith does not just mean putting uh, 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 a belief in an outside factor, but faith in myself. Now when we talk about bodhisattva, a, a bodhisattva must have faith. I can do it. That, that sense of faith must come in. Right? That, that I'm told I have to do this by myself. Then I, my faith tells me that if I follow the Buddha, it, it, I can do it. And two, I am capable of doing it. So this meaning of sadda is there. But faith alone is not important. This is an important point, you see. There's faith, then there is energy. It's not enough just to have faith and sit down there and say, Buddha, help me. You, you, you must get up there and go and move. Yeah? A lot of people, they, Buddhists especially, they, they have this wrong idea that Buddhism means just simply sit down, close your eyes and do nothing about it. That, that's not it. Buddhism is uh, 24 hours of the day you are at it. The four, uh, the, the four great uh, efforts. Okay? Now, so you have faith. That faith must be translated through energy yeah, to be directed. So you need faith, you need energy. Then you need mindfulness because too much energy. You, you don't think, you, you go straight. Uh, and, and you're running all over the place. So you need mindfulness to know whether you're right or wrong. You must always question yourself. So faith alone is not enough. You must have the mindfulness to know that this faith is being rightly applied. Faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration. The whole problem with the human race is our thinking is not trained. It's going all over the place. We think one thing one day, we jump to another place, we are what the Buddha calls the monkey mind. So you need to bring that into focus. So you see, from faith, you have moved to focus. Then comes the last stage, which is a long way away, wisdom. Yeah? But of course, all these are connected. The, the, the Buddha warns us, if you have too much faith and no wisdom, too much faith and no wisdom, you can do, a, and too much energy. You can see a lot of things that are going on in the world today with extremists. They have lots of faith, but they have no wisdom. All right? And they have a lot of energy, but they have no concentration. So these five. So when we talk about faith, we have to bring all these factors into play. It's not simply a question of I surrender everything and let God do the rest.